Hey, welcome back everyone. I wanted to make a quick video on how to draw a 3D riser in HydroCAD. It's uh, been a little while since I made a video. I've been currently busy learning uh, HydroCAD for Revit and that's where I want to start focusing my videos. Uh, but as you can see, I'm still working in the AutoCAD environment, which is fine. Um, I've just been slowly transitioning to HydroCAD Revit. But in the meantime, I thought I would share uh, how I draw my 3D risers in uh, HydroCAD for AutoCAD. So what we have here is a simple uh, system that we made for a fire station. Um, they have a remote FTC and a backflow in the vault, so it means our um, system riser is going to look pretty basic. I have a sort of a 2D template of how it's going to sort of look. Uh, like I said, this is just a template file, uh, but as you can see, uh, we got, uh, since we have a backflow in the vault on the fire line run, uh, we're not going to need a backflow at our riser, so all we're going to need is our control valve, our riser check valve, and since we have a remote FTC, we're going to show how to 90 over to that connection there. Um, According to the plans, our uh, FTC is, I think it's five feet from our riser. So that's going to be a pretty good base point there. Now, let's get started. So we know the important thing when you're drawing a 3D riser is you need to know your parts that you're going to need. So I know I'm going to need, you know, um, uh, a Vic flange adapter. If I, I, bl I believe they're going to have a flanged um, riser stub in, stub in for us. So we're going to need our flange adapter, our six by four reducer, our couplings, our butterfly valve, our check valve, a T, 90s. Um, flow switch and uh, that's about it um, I do have an electric sort of a um, an object that I use for our electric bell and um, if I go I have everything at zero so well we'll just uh, use that object that I have saved at a later time. So what we will need though is our basic components. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is open our HydroList file. Now there is a command to in uh, HydroCAD to open your HydroList uh, file from within the drawing, but I found it's a little bit more stable when you open it and then save as um, the drawing. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to say uh, yes and then save as not in the template files or anything. You want to save it in the same file folder that you have your DWG file in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and find that um, folder and save it in there. So we're going to navigate to that. I'm navigating off screen just so that you don't see all my other stuff on there. Um, but you find your job folder where you have your file and you're going to save it so my drawing file is just called drawing one mv so we're going to go oops i have caps lock on drawing one mv so there's that so now in the within the same folder we have um our dwg file and then there's our hydralist file so that's how it's going to know how to communicate with it so once we have that saved we're not going to mess with anything except for the miscellaneous tab so you're going to create a new um, section id and then so we can start off with our what we're our vic fittings let's go ahead and pick there uh, a lot of times drawing something like this might be a little overwhelming uh, but I found that, you know, just pick what you got to get and then, you know, eventually you'll, you'll have it all listed out. So I'm going to go into my fire lock fittings here. So I know I'm going to need, it's a four inch riser. 
So I'm going to go ahead and grab a 4-inch Firelock 90. Um, we'll just go ahead and add a Drain 90 just in case. Now I'm only using a quantity of 1 because we just need it to save into the section ID. We don't necessarily need to know the quantity of the fittings. Uh, we're not going to need any 45s. Let's go ahead and get a 4-inch T. And then uh, we'll go ahead and get our 4-inch coupling. And um, I believe that's it for that. Let's go ahead and get a 4-inch cap just in case. And uh, so here is our Vic flange adapter. It's a 6-inch coming in. So we're going to get one of those. And we're going to save that. So under that section ID, we have our fire lock stuff saved, our couplings, our fittings that we're going to need. So now let's go, I'm going to go into our VIC fittings because that's where we have our concentric reducers. So you're going to scroll until you see concentric reducer. We're going to need a 6x4. There's that one. Okay, and uh, so we have our fittings, couplings, um, and now let's, uh, I'm going to search for the word pack for our gasket pack. That's the nuts and bolts um, for the flange. So I'm going to get one of those. And I, I tend to go with the 125 pound flange. Um, that might not technically be correct when you go to list it, uh, when you go to stock list it, but usually your vendor is going to know what you need. They're not going to give you a gasket pack for um, uh, your... Uh, your flange adapter that's not going to fit and if they do uh, then you know it's very rare that they will they might actually ask you about it um, so anyway so we got that we got our bas our gasket pack in there so now let's get our valves um, I know that we are going to need a 717 which is our check valve um, actually, no, we don't need that because that is actually in the vault. Uh, if we go back here, I think I already have the detail put into the drawing. Um, yes, so this was actually provided by the contractor. Um, we see our check valve in the line and they actually made a manhole cover for it and all that good stuff. So we're not going to worry about the check valve in the riser. So we know, like I said, this was a template file right here. So we know that's going to go away. Uh, and I'm not going to use this at all. This is just sort of a, you know, a, just a template to follow. Just to, so we kind of know what parts we need and, and whatnot. So, okay, so we don't need the check valve, but we do need our butterfly valve. And I know the part for the butterfly valve is the Victolic 705. Uh, so I'll just search for 705 and then kind of scroll through all the list of all the 705s on there until you get to your Vic Butterfly. Now don't choose the 705W, that's a discontinued model. Uh, so we're going to go with the Vic, just a regular 705. We're going to pick one of those. So there's our Butterfly Valve. I know that our riser check is a 717R. So there's our 717R. Now, since we do have a backflow preventer on our fire line, we don't technically need another check valve at our riser. So what I might just do instead is, uh, since there's no fire hydrants or anything run off of this line or anything else is fed off of it where we would need to prevent backflow, um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and go with the riser assembly, which is the 747M. And I just know these part numbers off the top of my head. Uh, once you're in the trade for a while, you kind of learn to you memorize all these parts as you go. So the riser manifold, 747M, we're going to try to do, use that one. Uh, just in case, though, we're going to go ahead and look up water flow for our flow switch. So there it is. And hopefully these shortcuts help you out. Um, and that's the beauty of, of uh, HydraList is it actually has specific parts in there. It's not they're not generic. Uh, some of the some of the models that they have in here are pretty generic, but 
uh, for the most part, all of these are uh, straight up Victolic fittings. And I know the takeouts are going to be right. And I know that what, you know, the way that they look is going to be pretty, pretty close to how it ends up looking in real life. So we'll go ahead and get that flow switch in there. And then just for good measure, we'll get our test and drain as well. So I'm just going to look up test. And we'll go one inch test and drain. Actually, since there is a um, grid in the system, we'll pick the one inch test and drain and relief. And there we go. And you can't pick a 747 uh, model from Hydralist with the relief valve. So you tend to have to either call that out or if you really want to get creative, you can um, explode your model and then attach your test and drain with a relief valve on there. But I'll kind of show you a workaround. Super simple. Um, just using a regular polyline to sort of show the hose on the relief valve. But for the most part, it looks like we kind of have everything we need. So we're just going to save this. And I'm just going to keep this. I'm going to keep it open. Uh, and I'm just going to keep it off off to the, on my second monitor here. So the next step is going to be I'm going to go ahead and copy myself. Um, or actually, you know, you can I'm going to close my properties menu for now. But uh, you can select and input just I usually just input it anywhere. Your little riser symbol kind of move it off to the side and I'm going to go ahead and go into my isometric view. Okay. And then we're going to zoom in and don't, and I have just a ton of PDFs in this drawing that I had to reference to finish the design. So, my drawing is running a little bit slow because there's so much data in there, but uh, I do tend to work with PDFs a lot in uh, in HydraCAD, so um, I have had a few of, of my um, former co-workers open up my files and think that I'm crazy for only for using so many PDFs in these drawings, but it really kind of helps me um, visualize and help um, what I got to do better, but... Uh, I'll save that for a different video. So what we're going to want to do is insert a ski pole. Uh, the shortcut command is ISP in case you don't have, uh, you're not familiar with the uh, the toolbars. So ISP and I'm going to insert it right to the center of this guy. So there's our ski pole right there. Now the only thing that I tend to uh, draw using the 3d riser is just the, the starter flanges so what I'm gonna do is um, we'll go ahead and go with pipes and I'm just gonna draw myself that six inch pipe coming in with a plain end and a flange end and it's gonna be 12 inches long and we're gonna go ahead and insert that to the ski pole now there's that um, so what I can go ahead and do now is go ahead and insert my 4 inch plane and flanged um, 12 inches as well. Insert that. I'm just going to put it right on top of this one and I'll show you what I'll do here in a minute. So I'm going to grab our 4 inch and move that over our 5 feet. And then I'm going to copy this guy over or five feet. Let me turn on my dynamic input so y'all can see what I'm doing, my commands. Um, sorry, I had to figure out where my dynamic input was, but if you go over here to your customization tab, it'll pull up all your uh, additional options here, and I just had to make sure my dynamic input was selected. And there you go. So now you should be able to see all my commands on the screen. So cool. So here we go with this guy. And we're go I'm going to go ahead and copy the ski poles as well since we will be using those 60 inches over. So we got those two there. And now I realize that I am going to need a 4 inch 
um, adapter as well. So let's go ahead and get that in there. So we'll go back to our fire lock fittings, find our four inch flange adapter. And then we'll go ahead and get that four inch gasket pack as well. Select one of those. I keep this off to the side. So here we have the beginnings of our riser. Let's go ahead and save that. So let's go, uh, I'm just gonna hit 2D just to get a nice flat drawing back again. So now here's where, cause you can use that piping command that I just used to create my flanged outlets to, to do all your connections between pipes and pick your ski poles and it'll insert uh, the specific pipe length. But I'll show you what I've been doing lately and it seems to be um, quite effective in, in getting it across. So first things first, you need to have a working model. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and choose to go to 3D on this. And this can be, you know, any um, any model. Or if you want, uh, you can save um, yourself um, one of these hydro pipes. So we'll go ahead and get this elevated into 3D. No errors found, which is always good. And what you're going to want to do is you select, make sure it's hydro pipes and not another layer. You're going to isolate it. And then just copy yourself one of these hydro pipes. Uh, actually, preferably a flat one. So we're going to copy a flat one here. And I'm just going to move it out here. I don't know, 500. Oh. We'll do 500 feet out. Or. Let's just do 200 feet, just 200 feet out here. And what we're going to do is select that hydro pipe and then move it to our text layer. Now we're going to unisolate everything and then that can go by layer and go back to 2D. So now what we have here is a hydro pipe. So what you need here is this hydro pipe. And this hydro pipe here, uh, whatever, however way you get it from whatever model you get it, it doesn't matter. As, as soon as you get this hydro pipe, you can even save this into your own template file. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this guy and we're gonna go ahead and move it to sort of where our riser location is. Now here's where sort of the fun begins. Um, we're going to go into our isometric view again We'll go back into our riser. So we got to get this guy to stand up. Uh, we can go into our rotate commands and all that, but the cool thing about this uh, hydro pipe here is that not only is it a sort of a 2D representation of some piping, uh, it also almost works like a Revit object where um, the length will update as you sort of move it around and manipulate it. But on top of that, you can also take your ski pole. I'll just copy this guy. And what's cool is it actually has endpoints, not centers or anything like that. It's actually like a physical line, almost like a P line. So I'm going to put that at the endpoint there, and now I'm going to rotate it along the green axis. So flip towards green diamond. We're going to pick that ski pole, and then this guy, and then boom, there it is. So there's our pipe. I know it's two inches right now, but we'll start messing with that here in a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our uh, initial starter pieces in here. So we're going to go into insert fitting via HydroList. Since we have that HydroList file um, in that same job folder with the same um, file name, all the parts that we picked are in our um, part description here. So. First things first, we were going to put our um, flange adapter. We're going to insert that. It doesn't matter what direction we pick. And then we're going to go ahead and pick our 4 inch one as well. And insert this into there. Now you can see the holes line up pretty good. The one thing that you can't, for some reason, it inputs it 
uh, right on the flange. So you'll just have to move it up in the z-axis one inch. Now if we go um, back to our insert fittings, we can go and pick our gasket pack for the six inch. And again, it doesn't matter the direction on this one. So there's that. Then we'll go ahead and pick the gasket pack for the four inch that we picked. And again, doesn't matter which direction at that point. So there's our flanges. Um, go back into our parts menu. And from this point on, it kind of gets pretty quick. So we're going to get our six by four reducer. That guy goes right here. And then, so since we have the backflow out in the vault and our riser was going to look somewhat simple um, I'm going to go ahead and copy oh, I'm just going to move this closer to where we're working so we can use it as a reference and then kind of just move that right there I uh, pause the video real quick because again with all the PDFs in here this drawing's pretty slow. So from our drawing, we see that our riser is going to come up right here. It's going to tee off for our FTC, and then it's going to continue up for the, um, the floor system, which is at uh, 10 feet elevation is the top of our riser. So we're going to go the top of our riser. I'm just going to Go and I'll usually use like a text layer or something. We're gonna go text layer and then from the center of this guy, we're gonna go our 10 feet up. And then we know that's gonna do kind of this thing right here. So that's our sort of basic start point. Um, so here we go. Um, we're going to, let's go ahead and add our 90, our four inch fire lock 90 for our top of riser. 4 inch fire lock 90 insert fitting now it gets a little confusing sometimes to sort of figure out exactly where you're looking because all these overlapping uh, two 2d wireframe sort of objects here are just on top of each other but once you sort of figure out how to look at it you can kind of pick which one you know you're gonna need so I want my riser my 90 pointed in this direction so I'm gonna pick this guy here now we're gonna move this 90 from the center of it up to the perpendicular of that so now I know that that center point is exactly at 10 feet now um, let's add the other fittings that we need so usually when you're going to operate your your valves you don't want them to be too high up uh, so usually a good rule of thumb is about three or four feet up um, for your um, butterfly valve so we'll go ahead and um, give ourselves a bit of a reference line I'm just gonna go from the center here and then let's just go 48 inches up that'll be kind of around where our uh, butterfly valve is it doesn't really matter at this point so let's go back into our parts menu and we're gonna find our butterfly valve that we selected there's our four inch Vic B fly insert and then we're gonna want it in the red direction this one so we're gonna pick this ski pole in the red direction and then we're gonna move this guy up about right there if you want you can be really specific with the top of your valve right at the elevation that you picked so we'll go the center of here to the end point of that and we know that now the top of that butterfly valve is exactly at four feet so we can go ahead and erase that line and then so I'm gonna go ahead and use the riser manifold instead of the riser check since we have the check valves in the backflow in the vault 
So let's go ahead and find our 747 that we picked in here. Riser manifold. And this one, I believe the right direction is going to be in the yellow spade. But we'll see. Um, well, yeah, actually, it is in the right direction. Our butterfly valve is actually in the wrong direction because the controls are going to be facing out that way. So, they're going to be facing out that way. So, what I actually need to do is rotate this, which is fairly easy to do. So, you spin it around your blue axis, you pick your ski pole first, and then your object and you rotate that around. And a good rule of thumb on, uh, I don't know if your riser uh, manifold is pointed in the right direction, your gauge will uh, help guide you there. That's the front of the gauge. So we got our butterfly valve and our um, riser manifold. Now we're gonna need our T for the FDC. So let's go ahead and again, pick this guy here and we'll go into our fire lock T insert fitting opposite of red is yellow here and that outlet should be pointing that way now if you don't want your uh, T right on top of, of your valve you can kind of give yourself a um, you know some wiggle room or you can even straight up drop directly down to your FDC from your system but We'll go ahead and just do it this way. So the top of this, or in the middle of this valve here, is going to be... So if I draw a line from the center of that outlet, go into your Properties menu. By selecting PR, you select that, that uh, line there, and it'll give you your elevation um, at your NZ. So we're at... One foot eight and five eighths. Let's double check that. That doesn't sound right. It's going to go into our front view here. Hmm. Usually it'll give you the right elevation. So what we can do though is get a quick dimension from the endpoint here to the center of this base down here so we're at five foot four for our T that's not bad okay so getting these to line up is going to be it used to be really tricky whenever you use the um, the hydrogen piping thing but you'll see with this one it's going to be much easier doing it this way so let's go back into our ISO view Zoom back in here now. I'm going to go ahead and give myself like six inches just so that our fitters are not having to fit pieces right on top of each other. They get little filler pieces. So let's go ahead and um, draw ourselves a guideline from the center of this FDC flange up. And we're going to input another fire lock 90. 4 inch fire lock 90. Insert that there. Now we're going to move this from the center of that fitting to the perpendicular of our guideline over here. So there's those fittings right there. And then this just goes off to our system. All right, so we pretty much got everything that we need as far as fittings go. I'm going to go ahead and control S. Now here's uh, where this guy comes in handy. So with the properties menu pulled up, when you select a hydro pipe, you can manipulate it in a number of different ways. One of them is the diameter. So we know it's a four inch pipe. So I'm going to go ahead and select four inch. Now on top of that, what you can also select um, is 
the diameter and the length visibility. So you can actually say, no, I don't want to see the diameter, and no, I don't want to see the length. So now you just have a hydro pipe that you can start to move around as you need it. So I'm going to move this to the center there, and then this other end to the center of that butterfly valve there. And just copy this guy over. Move this from this endpoint to the center. All of our fitting there. You got to be real careful not to uh, not to select the different center point. So the center there, and we know it's a six-inch piece. to that center there and we'll copy this one again to the center here and to the center of this fitting then we'll copy it again so at this point you can see it's so much quicker than actually going into your hydra list menu and selecting okay so you see how i just kind of select that there so what i used to do we'll just move it out of the way for now what i used to do is i used to go into your my hydro list fittings menu and then um through the pipes select the diameter and then grooved ends and grooved ends and then i would pick my ski pole that one and that one and it's a four foot four piece so now we'll go to insert pipe and then so there's the pipe inserted but once it's inserted I mean, that's it. You're stuck with it. You know, say they came back and said, uh, you know, oh, actually the uh, the FTC is, you know, a foot closer or whatever. And so now you would have to go back, erase that, and then redo your command all over again. Whereas with this option, if we did need to move it over just a foot, then I can just easily grab one end and then, you know, move it over a foot and there's that piece without having to go into any menu items or anything like that. So we're going to go ahead and undo until uh, we get that piece back in there. And then copy again. And select the center of that fitting there. And then go to the center of this fitting there copy this from the endpoint to the center over here and then I'll just kind of extend that out erase my original guidelines that I had made I'm save that so now it's just a matter of inserting my couplings. So go back into the fittings menu. We're going to insert our rigid coupling. I'm going to go ahead and default it to the uh, yellow spade. Insert fitting. And then just start going crazy inserting this, these fittings here. Everywhere that you would need a coupling. and so forth and so on and again over here and down here And all right, that's looking like a riser to me. So let's go to our back view so that we can sort of see. So there's our riser right there. There's a butterfly valve and all that. So now what I will usually do is in my... Um, paper space sheet 
usually have a uh, window, a viewport set up. I'm going to go with the back view on it and zoom into my riser. And we're going to set the scale. Usually for risers, I like to go half inch. That tends to be a pretty good scale. And I don't typically add notes or anything within the model space. I tend to use all, keep all my notes in a paper space and all my nodes and stuff. So I just have them scattered around from previous projects that I just, you know, grab and use as I need them. One day I, I'll tell, I'll, I tell myself one day I'll uh, clean it all up and just make a master template file. But for now, um, it just kind of seems to work. So here's where I'll start adding all my um, nodes that I know are in my calcs. So there's top of riser, bottom of riser, and then uh, we can start labeling our drawing. Now for the, um, what we can do for our um, underground, I'll show you. Let's go back into our ISO view. Just to get a little bit, you know, we'll just be showing off at this point, but who cares? Why not, right? So I'm going to go ahead and copy my ski poles. Let's just copy them over a foot. Then I'm going to rotate it along the yellow axis, or the green actually, and point it down. Same thing with this other one. Point it down. I'm going to move them back an inch, or the 12 inches that we moved them out originally. So now we have a ski pole pointing down. So what we can do is go back into our HydraList file. And we're going to go into our flange fittings. And we're going to need a little 6 inch flange. And then a 4 inch flange. And save. Move this out of the way. So we can get our six inch flange. So usually we go um, four feet to the underground. So we're going to make ourselves a little guideline here, 48 inches. And then uh, the underground comes out this way. Same thing with the FDC line. So we can just copy that over here. So that's kind of the way our underground is going to run. We can go into our hydrolyst fittings thing. Think I'm a bob and find that six inch flange that we selected and go to insert fitting and I think it was yellow was the color that we were looking for okay and then insert our four inch to the yellow I believe okay so now we got our both of our fittings here going to go from the center of this fitting down to the perpendicular of our guideline there and then it's going to be a little bit different for this one so we're going to go from the center to perpendicular of that line there now we can add our um, gasket packs to just really clean it up and make it look nice On our four inch gasket pack here, here, then our six inch here, and here. Close that. Now we can uh, copy our pipe here. Center there, and move it to the center here. Make it six inch. Copy this guy. And the cool thing is, is I don't need to add a ski pole to this to rotate it. What I can do is say we can select flip towards the yellow, and we just select the ski pole 
and then we'll select the object. And there it is. Move from the endpoint to the center. And then same thing for this guy. Only this time, we're going to go 4 inch on that. Put the center there. Copy this one here. Make it 4 inch. Alright, and then move that from the endpoint to the center. Now we can erase our guidelines. So there's that. Now, what we can do, since we're already in our text layer, select everything, hit B for block. And we'll just call this, um, you know, drawing one riser. Really doesn't matter, whatever you want to call it. Pick point, I'm going to pick it right at our riser symbol. We're going to hit OK. So now we just made a block out of our riser. And we can input it right where we need it is right here and then I also did have a model already created over here so what we can do is copy this guy over I think I saved it at 2,000 feet over here so yeah it was at 2,000 feet so 2,000 feet and there's our riser input with our model there. We're going to save that. And then what I also like to do is uh, in NFPA 13 it says for your plans you either show the cross section elevation or an isometric detail of the drawing. And when you're in a time crunch sometimes it's just as easy to show a little isometric detail of your drawing. Um, so I just, what I did is I have the background imported as an XREF, so I just copied that XREF over 2,000 feet as well. And we'll go back to our paper space and I'll show you kind of what I do there. So, oh, I moved it out of the way. I gotta actually copy it. We'll copy our riser back. Two thousand feet. Oh, it's not there. What gives? There's a double there. Oh, I know why. I believe text is turned off on. That viewport, so I'm going to make myself a new layer. Make it white. Close that, and then we'll move this to that text 20 layer we just created. Then the same thing with this one over here, just in case. But I believe everything should be visible on this one, but we'll just make sure. So let's go back to our paper space. For some reason, our drawing's not showing up. Oh, wait, there's our riser. It moved on us a little bit. Wonder why. Um, and what we can do, we can use our 3D view here. So let's go ahead and go back to our half inch scale. So now we're actually using 
the 3D riser, including the model. I think I had it like about right there. Now you can see the model kind of extends out into that fitting there. So what we can do is actually grab it and we'll just go ahead and erase that since we don't really need it. We're going to tuck in this viewport here. On this pipe right there, this hydro pipe, I don't want to see the dimension or the length. So no, no. And there's another one in there. No. And no. And once again. And no. Okay. So there's our riser. Now at this point, it's just a matter of adding your notes. You know, six inch. Our line and actually let's make sure we're in our back view here so yeah that's the back view so this is if you're in the riser room and this gives you a really specific you know riser for your project instead of using your typical generic sort of riser templates. This kind of, I, I, I think this takes it to another sort of quality level that you don't typically see. And then even if you wanted to for, once you get to stock listing, the only, the only problem is, you know, you can't stock list this. So you, you usually have to end up hand listing something like this, but it doesn't really matter because um, once uh, once you know your lengths, it's it gets pretty easy to to list all your loose pipe. And I typically um, tend to uh, list the riser piping separately and and have it cut to fit in the field just to make sure there's no problems. Oh yeah, and then with the um, test and drain valve with the PRV that it needs, typically what I can do just to kind of show that it has the um, relief valve, I'll pull up the cut sheet real quick. On the Victolic site. So here is the way it sort of looks with the PRV valve on there. Pressure relief valve de detail. So it's just a little hose. So what I typically do is I'll just draw using a P line and then with a width of 0.02 just kind of draw myself a little squiggly line or something. Let's draw a little bit, a nicer looking one. So, so whatever, you know, just enough to kind of make it look like it's, uh, like it's got the PRV on there. So then we're going to go four inch riser manifold with flow switch and range test and drain. Let's go ahead and expand this out a little bit. Mm 
Okay. And then uh, let's shrink this down just a little bit. Okay, and then just one last note up here. Go ahead and move this guy over here. And then what I kind of typically also like to do um, is make myself sort of some elevation markers for the plan just to make it to make it look a little bit more clear. And, we'll go. and the cool thing is, is you can do um, so the endpoints of all these again. So let's move our TOR out of the way so it's not being blocked. And then I know we're at 10 feet there, so Input dash zero. Actually, let's move this out a little bit. Extend this guy back, and then we'll move this one over a little bit. Copy this one. Down here for our one foot. And we'll just pick the center. Do that fitting there. So, we got pretty much everything labeled here in our drawing. So now, check out my um, my viewport here. So, a lot of times, uh, you can keep it in a 2D wireframe and it'll look just fine on your plan. Um, but what I kind of like to do sometimes is really, um, make it look neat, which is why, which is the main reason why I use my notes in paper space, because now what you can do is set up your, your, uh, visual style for when it plots out, but I don't want to bog my drawing down too much. So what we want to do here is under shade plot I usually like to go with a uh, conceptual style so we're going to select conceptual now what this does when you do it this way through the properties menu and select your shade plot but leave your visual style at 2d wireframe it leaves your drawing in, in 2d wireframe while you're working on it but then when you go to preview it it puts it in a uh, conceptual rendering which looks like trash in your print preview by the way but when you go to plot it 
and I'll just plot out um, just a regular drawing here just to so you can see all right there it goes and bring that over so now this is what you end up with right there so I think that looks pretty cool um, so at that point it's just a matter of you know making sure all your stuff is labeled and um, that's pretty much it oh well that's all I really wanted to go over and that's my cat telling me it's a little too late for me to be on on here trying to teach you guys whatever I know so anyway I hope you enjoyed this little short video uh, I will be posting it here shortly and uh, you all have a good one and uh, I hope to be uh, posting some stuff in Revit here pretty soon um, I can't guarantee anything just yet it's been a bit of a learning curve and then also trying to keep up with my workload uh, sometimes it's been just a little easier to keep hanging out in HydraCAD uh, but eventually I'll make the transition to Revit and then we'll start making some fun videos with that uh, but until then y'all take it easy and uh, have a good one goodbye